Well, praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome to another wonderful Wednesday Wisdom Word. This is Apostle Willard Saunders, and I can't wait to deliver this to deliver this word to you tonight. I'm so excited. I'm so excited about what the Lord is sharing with me and um, what the Lord is giving to me. And I just want to share it with you. So all of you that are coming in a little bit later might be watching the replay. I bless God for all of you and thank God for you that are coming in now. And uh, we're excited about everybody. I just want you to come on in, share with somebody, let somebody know uh, that I am on right now. If you believe that what I'm sharing with you is valuable, I need you to share it with somebody else, all right? If you believe it's valuable, share it with somebody else. God bless you, created this coming into the house. I see Clementine, I see Kendra, uh, you guys are coming. Push that share button. Push that share button right now. That is your responsibility, amen? My responsibility is, 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 is to prepare uh, for all of you. That's my job. Your job is to share with everybody. All right. I see Mother Hawkins is with me. Amen. Many more of you are with me. Push that share button right now. Okay. I want y'all to do that. Thank God for all of you that are coming in right now. I see folk. Brenda California is in the house. Tawanda Randalltown is in the house. Amen. Angie Foster. Harford County is in the house. <laughs> Thank God for all of you. Amen. Marion is in the house. Thank God for everybody tonight that's coming on. Uh, again, if you feel like what I've been sharing and what I have to share tonight uh, is valuable to you, I need you to push the share button. Amen. I need you to push the share button. Amen. Anybody out of town, let me know where you're from. We got visitors on here and thank God for all of you. Thank God for all of our virtual partners and all of you that have been partnering with the ministry. We bless God for every single one of you. Now, I want y'all to sit back, get ready for this one. We're still dealing with the power of obedience. Uh, um, we're still dealing uh, with the power of obedience. And one of the things we're going to talk about tonight is uh, what to do when you don't know what to do. And I have to apologize, LaShawn. I didn't give you all these scriptures tonight. Uh, I do apologize for that. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll walk through them anyway. And prayerfully, you can pick them up. That is my mistake. Uh, I didn't get them to my producer tonight, uh, but we'll still be able to uh, uh, walk through them uh, in the name of the Lord. So God bless you, everybody. Pray that everybody had a wonderful day, um, that you're being safe and doing everything you need to do to be safe. Amen. Pray that you had an absolute wonderful day today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We love you. Love you. We praise you for just another opportunity that you've given us to come into your presence. Bless us now as we go deeper into your word. Open up our ears, our hearts, our understanding that we might be able to receive what you have for us. In Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. So God bless you. God bless you. We're dealing with the power, uh, uh, the power of obedience. And, 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 and one of the things that we're going to be dealing with um, today, one of the statements that the Lord gave me on Sunday, and I'm going to just come out the gate with this one. Don't worry about the how, just obey. Don't worry about the how. I'm hitting you hard. Don't worry about how God's going to do it. Don't worry about how it's going to work out. I'm going to tell you today, just obey. Just obey. Don't try to figure out the mechanism because faith is the thing that initiates it. Don't try to figure it all out because you're not going to figure out. Let me share something with you. <clears throat> God never instructed us to understand. He only instructed us to believe, right? And when you believe, you belief is the, is the yeast. It is the activator of faith that when you believe and you move, things start to happen. It's the yeast. You know what I'm talking about? Like yeast and dough makes it rise, makes it grow. It's a living entity. It does that. So you don't have to always understand, but you do need to obey. I want to rehearse a scripture that I gave to you last week, and I don't know if you have it, LaShawn, or not. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse number one. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 and verse number one. Deuteronomy 21, eight. I'm just going to do verse number one right now. Look what it says. If you fully obey the Lord your God 
and carefully follow all his commandment, commandments. Remember I talked about the if then contingency last week, that the if factor, that if you do this, if you do this and you follow his commandments, I give you today, this is Moses talking to Israel, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. Now, if you look at this text, you see th two things coming. We have a responsibility and God has a response. We have a responsibility. Watch this now. And God has a response. What God is saying is, if you do this, you activate me to do that for you. But you've got to do this first. You've got to fully obey. If you fully obey, you activate the power of God to do certain things in your life. And he goes through this long list in Deuteronomy 28 as to what happened. And later on in the list, it tells you what happened. If you don't obey, you'll be cursed, right? But you can release the blessings if right, if you fully, not, not partially, if you fully obey the Lord your God, carefully follow his commands or instructions, all right? The Lord Moses said, I'm giving you today and that I am giving to you today. All right. Then what will happen is the Lord promises he's guaranteeing to you that he will set you high above all the nations or all the peoples of the earth. These are the instructions for living a successful and blessed life. All right. To fully obey. If you do it, you have successful marriages. You'll have a successful family. You have a successful career. Right. What I want you to get tonight is that there is I, I'm going to really dig into this. There is a prescribed way. There is a due order. You cannot just do whatever you want to do and arrive at success. You can't just do it any kind of way. You can't look at it and figure out how you want to get. It. You got to follow the map. You got to follow the GPS. You got to follow the plan. If you don't follow the plan, there is no way to arrive at success in whatever you're doing. How to handle your finances, how to be able to buy a car, how to be able to get your credit together. All these things, there is a prescribed way. There is a prescribed way. And I want y'all to get that down. There is a prescribed way. There is a way in which things work. There is an order to the universe. There is a order to life. There is a order to the things that God has, has given us. All right. I, I, I want to go to first, first Chronicles, verses fifth, verse 15 and 13. First Chronicles 15 and 13. And I want to talk about this story with David and this ox cart trying to bring home uh, uh, the Ark of the Covenant. First Chronicles, first Chronicles, verse 15 and 13. Amen. If you have it in your Bibles, just open it up. I may not be able to get it on the screen uh, because I neglected to give it to my producer today. And so it's not her fault. It's my fault today. Amen. But I want you to get this. It says, it was because you, the Levites, did not bring it up the first time, it being the Ark of the Covenant, that the Lord our God broke out in anger against us. We did not inquire of him about how to do it in the prescribed way. This is in the NIV, the NIV, amen. First Chronicles 15 and 13 in the NIV. I will read it again. David is talking to the Israelites and he's saying, it's because you, the Levites, did not bring it up the, up the, first, up, bring it up the first time that the Lord our God broke out in anger against us. We did not inquire of him, the Lord, about how to do it in, one scripture says, in due order. We didn't go or look for the right way. Now, what does this whole text have to deal with? It has to deal with David's desire to bring home the Ark of the Covenant. You can read all of 1 Chronicles chapter 15, to bring home the Ark of the Covenant, all right? It had been with the Philistines, and David wants to go back and bring it home. But what David did, because the Ark of the Covenant had not been with Israel uh, during the whole reign of Saul, what David did was do it the way the Philistines had done it. That means they put the Ark of the Covenant on an ox cart. 
They put it on an ox cart as opposed to it being born on the shoulders of the Levites, which is God's way. So as a result, as they're going along, they're dancing and they're shouting and they're praising God. As they're doing all of that, uh, uh, Uriah, uh, um, he, he stumbles and, and well, the ox, I'm sorry, the ox stumbles and the guy Uriah tries to hold it up. And when he does that, God strikes him dead. And David is upset because God struck him dead. Why? Because he wasn't supposed to touch it. David had good intentions about how he was going to do it, but he did it wrong. And that's because he did it wrong and did not do it the right way. Somebody died. We've been having church the wrong way. People, people are dancing and shouting, but they're still dying at the same time. Because we keep doing everything the way everybody else does it. I remember several years ago, I shut down my church for three months. All we did was pray. We're going to seek the Lord for the due order because that's what David did, right? Right thing, wrong way. Right idea, wrong way. That's what David did. He said, I'm shutting this down. I'm taking this off to Obed Eaton's house. We're going to leave it there until we figure out the right way. Now, let me tell you something. There is a right way and there is a wrong way. All right. There is a right way and there is a wrong way. Uh, uh, the, the, the beloved Bishop John Leslie for many years ago, uh, he wrote a book on it. He preached a message that said for an entire year, everybody can't be right. Everybody can't be right. And that is a fact. There are not multiple ways to God. There aren't multiple ways to do things. There are not multiple ways for success. There are not multiple ways to do this. You can't come any way you want and think it's going to work because you don't know how things work. You don't know how it works. When you learn how it works and you learn the system, then things begin to work out in your life. Let me give you another scripture. And LaShawn, I'm so sorry I didn't get these to you today. And this is Proverbs 14 and 12 in the King James Version. Proverbs 14, 12 in the King James Version. Amen. There is a way that seemed right unto a man, could be a man or woman, but the end there are of are the ways of death. One text says the ways of destruction. That means you think you know when you don't know. Right. There are ways that you think that will work. Thank you. There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There are ways that you think it's supposed to work and you end up getting fired. You end up losing your marriage. You end up losing your children. You end up going broke. You end up making bad deals. You end up making, making poor, doing things in a poor way because you don't know the way it's supposed to be done. You think you know. See, that's the arrogance. You think you know. You think you know, but you don't know. And you aren't willing to find out what the way is because you aren't willing to admit that you don't know. <clears throat> Let me give you this. You can destroy your destiny with good intentions. That's what David almost did. He almost destroyed everything with good intentions. You can destroy your, your destiny with good intentions when you don't follow God's system. Right? When you don't find. There is a, let me, help, let me slow down a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, there is a system for everything. I don't care what it is. There is a system. There's a system just for me to get online. If I don't follow the directions, I'm not getting online. There's a system. Everything you can think about. Cooking is a system, right? Eating right is a system. There's a way to keep your body healthy. It's a system. But when you want to go and do whatever you want to do, you will get the results. It will come in your body, either positively or negatively. There is a system for everything, right? That's what happened in this story. They didn't seek God for his way. And here's the other part. They adopted someone else's system. When the Lord had a system just for them for the carrying of the Ark of the Covenant. As children of God, 
there is a godly system for everything that we do. The problem is we we try to do it. There's a world, there's a way the world does it, and there's a way that God does it. And what am I talking about? What is the it that I'm talking about? I'm talking about whatever you're trying to achieve. If it's something as simple as joy, if it's success, right? The, the world tell you don't give, don't tithe, don't give your offering. Save the, no, 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 no. God has a way. And here's what he said in the book of Isaiah. He said, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways above your ways. And when you go your way, as my sister Camille just said, you get bad results, you get poor results when you try to do it your way. I just said to you, everybody can't be right. There cannot be a multitude of ways. Yeah, there may be different ways to get to New York, different ways to drive, right? There may be different roadmaps that you can take to get to the same place, but there's some that are better than others. And when you're living and working with God and you want to see great success in your life, You've got to be able to seek God or seek someone who knows the prescribed way. All of us, let me slow down, all of you and me, all of us are experiencing the results of what we did not know or what we refuse to know or what we refuse to change once we did know. I'm going to say that again. We are living with the results of either what we did not know, what we refuse to know, or what we refuse to change once we did not know. I gave you last week that, that Miles Monroe said something very powerful. He made this statement that really that, that, that God is not concerned about just sin or, 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 sin or, or, or our, our salvation in that way. The thing that holds us up the most is Isaiah 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. I know what it was I was trying to say. He's not concerned about sin or Satan because he's both he's defeated both of them on the cross. Sin and Satan have both been defeated on the cross, right? So that's not God's issue. God's issue is what you refuse to know. Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because they reject knowledge. All of us experiencing right now the results of what we did not know. How many have ever said in your life, if only I had known? <laughs> oh, my God. If we had about $10 for every time we said that, we'd be rich. If only I had known things we did not know. Or something that somebody tried to tell you that you didn't want to listen to. You didn't want to hear it. You didn't want to obey their instructions. And you went your own way. Right. Or or sometimes you just ref you knew it. You just didn't want to change. You're going to keep biting your head up, Sid, against the hot wall. Keep doing the same thing the same way and not be willing to change. And therefore you reap the results of it. OK, sometimes. OK, out of ignorance and sometimes out of arrogance, we won't we, we won't learn what we need to learn. We make mistakes out of ignorant ignorance and arrogance. We just don't know, or we're so arrogant, we refuse to know. The key to all of this, here's the key to all of this. The key to all of this is humility. Humility is the key to all of this. I'm getting ready to go to 1 Peter 5 and 6 in the King James Version. 1 Peter 5 and 6. Humility is the key to all of it. God's just been driving this in my spirit. Humility is the key to all of this. It is the key. Here's what 1 Peter 5 and 6 says. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. You got to learn to be humble. And humble doesn't mean, oh, I'm so meek. No. Humility means I don't know everything. I can't control everything. I've got to go to another source or someone else that I need to obey. Humility means I obey God. Jesus was exalted in Philippians chapter 2. It says he was exalted because he was obedient. Obedient even unto death. Therefore, God gave him a name that was above every other name. 
that the name at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. He made him Lord Jesus Christ. He humbled himself. He made of himself no reputation. He humbled himself. When you humble yourselves, and don't let God humble you. That's one of the worst things you want to ever have happen. Don't let God humble you. Because <laughs> when God humbles, you're going to pay. Humble yourself. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. All right? Submit your, It says resist the devil. Submit yourself, therefore, to God and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Submit. You've got to do it. You've got to do it. You've got to humble yourself. Okay? Humility eliminates arrogance. That's exactly right. They can't go hand in hand, Camille. Humility eliminates arrogance. You must admit, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, that's my word tonight. You must admit that you need help. <laughs> you got to admit that you need help. And when you get that help, follow the instructions. Follow the instructions. Follow the directions. Do what someone is telling you to do that's already been where you're trying to go. Do what you're trying to do. I remember very early in life, I, I was the youngest assistant principal in the city of Baltimore. All right. I knew when I came out of college what I wanted to do. I graduated from college, Frostburg State College, uh, at, at age 21. I knew I wanted to go into administration. I knew I wanted to be an assistant principal, principal, and then superintendent of schools. So from the time I got there at 21 year, years old, I went to the principal and I told him, I want to do what you're doing. I need you to show me how. At 21, he sent me to one of the assistant principals, uh, Mr. Dyer, I will never forget. And he gave me to him. And he said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And I went to him. And he, what he did was he had me give up my lunch period every day. He said, if you're serious about this, I need you in my office every day doing lunch. I'm a 21-year-old, 22-year-old teacher. I did that every day. And whatever assignment he gave me, I made sure I did it. I gave up. I listened to what he told me. Then I had other people that I had met that I, I went to them. What do I need to do to get here? What do I need to do to get there? And what I found out is that when you tell people that you need, they need, this is one of the ways you get promoted on your jobs. How do I get to this point? Don't sit back and just wait for somebody to come offer you a promotion. You prepare yourself. I'm giving you instruction now. How you do that? How you you you, you ingratiate people? I appreciate you. I, I, how can I help you? And you got to be willing to make the sacrifice. When people tell you what you need to do. You need to be willing to do it. I was willing to do it. And I did it. Even when I got ready to become, I got moved and went to another school. I, I, Oscar Job was there. And I asked him, I told him, this is where I want to go. And he began to position me to be able to do that, gave me responsibilities, made me a department head when I was 24 years old. All right. So by 26, I got I got my master's degree by the time I was 25. So 26, I applied. And even when it, it was time for the test, I went to people who had already had the test and tell them, what do I need to be ready for? Did not assume that I knew everything. And God blessed me that I went and passed it with flying colors. And before they even put the list out, I had people wanting to hire me. So 26 years old, I'm assistant principal in the city of Baltimore. Got people. I'm, I, and when I went to one school, I had teachers that had taught me in junior high school. And they were under me. Why? Because I followed the directions. I wasn't arrogant. I listened and obeyed. See, this concept goes more than just spiritually. It has an effect in your real life if you get it. It has an effect, right? So when you act like you know you don't know, one of the greatest things you can do is admit what you don't know and admit that you need help in certain areas. I'm helping somebody right now. Admit when you're weak. Admit when, you're, when, you, when, you, when you don't have all that you need. And God will direct you to the right sources to get what you need. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We don't want to be dependent upon anybody else. And that's arrogance. That's the spirit of Satan. When you don't want to be dependent upon anybody else. Because it will flow over to not being dependent upon God. Lord, I can fix this myself. I can work this out. I got, you don't have enough money to do everything you want to do. That's why God says bring the tithe and the offering because he takes it and multiplies it and does for you things you can't do for yourself. David was humble 
even when he admitted or found out that he was doing the ark, the ark of the covenant the wrong way, he said, we're going to stop this thing and get it right. We're going to get it right. Okay. So you must admit that you need help. And when you get the help, follow the instructions. Come to your pastor. That's why you need leaders in your life. That's why you need a pastor in your life. You need somebody you can come to and say, I really don't know what I'm doing here. All right? Don't You don't have to keep bumping your head up against the wall. You don't have to do that. Here's what I learned. Experience is not the best teacher. Other people's experience is the best teacher. Why do you have to go through something that somebody else has gone through? You don't have to go to the cross anymore because Jesus already went there. Right. Jesus already went to the cross. So why do you need to go? Right. You got to get this in your spirit. All right. I want to get you. I want, I want to give you something else. And, and Sean, I'm going to Acts uh, chapter two, verses 36 to 38 in the King James Version. That's the next thing I'm going to be dealing with. All right. So here's the question and the answer. What do you do when you don't know what to do? And I'm going to answer that right now. When you finally get to the point of humility, when you finally get broken, when you finally realize that the stuff that you're doing is not working, right? That's what the woman with the issue of blood had to come to, to herself. And she said to herself, she had to come to herself, what I'm doing is not working. What do I now do? But I don't know what to do. And I'm going to give you that answer in a very familiar scripture. Acts chapter 20, Acts 2, verse number 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now watch this. This is Peter talking to the Jews who stood around and said, crucify Jesus. And Peter has preached to them to the point that he's convicted them that you killed the Messiah. He's risen again, but you were the ones that did it. Okay, the next verse, next verse, all right? Therefore, he said, now, now when they heard this, when they realized that they were wrong, they found themselves in a predicament, they were pricked in their heart. That means they were cut to the heart, as one, ver one text says. That means they were convicted that they messed up. And they said unto Peter and the rest of the disciples, men and brethren, what shall we do? Didn't say what shall we do to be saved, but what shall we do? Other words, we don't know what to do. We don't know how to get out of this. And Peter gave them the answer. Peter said unto them, repent. And that's about as far as I'm going to go, but I'll read the rest for you. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm just going to deal with the word repent. All right? What do you do when you don't know what to do? You repent. Now, I'm going to take repentance out of the context of what we think it is just for salvation just for admitting, you know, I need to be saved. I see God as my savior, but this is the formula. Now I will, I will stop here right now. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There is one way to be saved. You can't just think your way being saved. You got to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, believe that God raised him from the dead. Then you've got to repent. Now I'm going to break that out. Then you've got to be baptized in the, in the name of Jesus and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is apostolic. I, this is what I believe. This is what the word of God says. OK, but what do you do when you don't know what to do? You repent. OK, the Greek word for repent is metanio. Metanio. That's the Greek word for repentance, meaning, listen to this. It means to change one's mind and purpose as a result of, of, the, of the after knowledge they have received. In other words, you change your mind and your purpose after you receive knowledge. You get knowledge and you change. You get knowledge and you adjust. You get knowledge and you do things differently. It's not just a matter of turning your back on something. It means you change your mind. You change your mind. You don't let your mind be conformed. Let it, you know, don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the changing of your mind. That means you need new information. And when you get new information, you change your mind and your purpose. Your purpose are your actions. 
You do things differently as a result of the after knowledge, the knowledge that you've gotten. Am I helping anybody tonight? Yeah, we're going a little bit deeper tonight. All right. Acknowledge. All right. Acknowledge that you went wrong somewhere and change course. That's what David had to do. Find the prescribed way. Acknowledge that you messed up. It's the first step of what to do when you don't know what to do. Realize I'm in a mess. I'm lost. This is not working. Go to a counselor. You know, your mind jacked up. You got mental health issues. Your marriage is jacked up. Go to somebody that can help you. But you've got to first acknowledge that you messed up. And the thing that won't let you acknowledge it is pride. Pride precedes death. Pride precedes the fall. You've got to admit that you don't know, right? When you do that, you go after, I want to keep pounding this home, you go after the prescribed way. Prescribed way. And watch this now. What stops you from doing that? Okay? Fear, arrogance, and doubt. Fear, arrogance, and doubt are the blockades to obedience. <laughs> Fear, arrogance, and doubt. Here's what he did with Eve. He made her afraid that she was losing out on something. And then he appealed to her arrogance. One of the areas of sin is the pride of life. You're going to be like God, knowing good from evil. He appealed to that. And when he did that, he caused her to move out of the place of obedience. And Adam, he just ate the fruit along with her. And they both were kicked out of the place of their blessing because they allowed fear, doubt, and arrogance to block the obedience. Fear, doubt, and arrogance. Fear, doubt, and arrogance. Right? Some of you can't give the way you need to give because of fear. You're afraid you're going to do without. You're afraid, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to do this? How am I going to let this happen? That's fear. So you can't be, you can't obey God. You want to understand. When God didn't tell you to understand, he said, believe. Just obey. I got this new call last week. I talked about it in church, right? And two things happened to me last week after this call. On Thursday, I went to a tent revival. Went to a tent revival on Thursday uh, with Bishop Weeks, and I really was tired. I didn't feel like going, but something in my spirit said for me to go. Something said for me to go. So I went. Amen. Lady Jan and my sister Barbara, we went, and it really wasn't even Bishop Weeks' tent revival. Another young man, Prophet Brown, was doing it, and I went in like, what in the world am I doing here? They just going in, going in, going in. They just, I called it a power surge. We had one on Sunday as well. It was an amazing service on Sunday. And after a while, Bishop Weeks came along and took my hand and walked me up to the front. And he started prophesying and praying for me and speaking healing into my body. And next thing I know, the whole service turned around. It was amazing. Everybody, they're praying for me, laying hands on me. And I fall, I find myself falling down on the concrete on my knees, speaking in tongues like I did when I got the Holy Ghost the first time. And I heard God in my spirit says, it is done. It is done. I heard God in my spirit say to me, it is done. And he said something else to me that he had given me when he healed my mother. When he healed my mother, I was in prayer just like this. And he said, I want you to call your mother and tell her I've heard her, I heard her request. I heard her, her cry rather, and I will honor her request. And he said that to me. He said, son, I've heard your cry. I will honor your request. I fell out. It was all over. I fell out. None of that would have happened if I hadn't been obedient. If I hadn't heard from God and took away fear and doubt and been obedient to what God had me to do. Saturday, I went up to New Jersey. I got in a letter and in the, in, in the email about this car. And uh, they were telling me how much they'll give me for my car. And just something in my spirit said, oh, I just go check it out. I told Lady Jan and, and my son and my grandson, I said, we just going to have a nice ride. I don't know if anything's coming out of this, but I'm going anyhow. I had a little doubt in my mind. I had a little doubt in my mind, but I'm going anyhow. Right? They told me, I can, we can take you out of your car, put you into a nice Maybach. Right? And uh, I said, oh, okay, God, we'll see what happens. 
I went up there and I was still doubtful. I was talking myself out of it. See, sometimes you talk yourself out of your own miracle. I got in the car. I was talking about all that was wrong with it. What wasn't right. You know, yeah, I should hold on to what I got. Sometimes God's trying to move you to a whole different level, but doubt will make you talk yourself out of it. Doubt will tell you, you can't do it. You can't, you can't handle this. You can't do it. When God is opening up the door, there is nothing that can block it. Except you. I was talking myself out of it. Right? Was getting ready to leave. Then something said, you need to turn around and go back. And I turned around and went back and started thinking about it. My wife gave me something that I needed to think about, how I needed to look at it. And she showed me what God was doing for me at that moment. So I said, okay, let's go see what the numbers are going to be. I told them what I wanted. And they came back with the numbers better than I could ever have imagined. I'm like, are you serious? Are you going to give me this much for my car? And you ready to to take this car down like this? I said, are you serious about this? They said, yeah, this is it. We can do it. Then I said, well, you know, I think I got some issues with my credit. And the Lord said, just be quiet. I told him this on Sunday. It came back in five minutes. In five minutes. Said it's done. Here's the payment. I said, are you serious? Done quicker than I could ever imagine. Driving something that I never thought I'd be able to drive. But God did it. And I'm healed at the same time. See, if you're willing and obedient, you eat from the good of the land. And I told everybody, I'm I'm prophesying for a moment here before I finish this text. Every one of you that's connected to me in any kind of way, the same anointing is flowing down through you. I got calls today. God got calls today from a young man, the pastor that I preached for a few years ago. He said, I need to be your spiritual son. God just spoke to me today. He said, "I I need to be your spiritual son. I got a call from Pakistan. From a reputable pastor, I got to give this to you, LaShawn, that wants me to do a Zoom call for over 300 pastors in Pakistan and wants me to come. And I checked him out, wants me to come onto his television station, Kingdom TV. Like, God, where's this stuff coming from? The Lord said, because you were willing and obedient. Because you followed my instruction. You've done what I've told you to do. You've given, you sacrifice. And when you do that, stuff start happening. See, this is the exceeding abundantly. Now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I could ever ask or think according to the power of obedience and the Holy Ghost that works in me. Stacy, you were obedient. You sent an offering before I ever came online. And I'm telling you that obedience is the key that's going to unlock everything that you want. Watch God do it. Ask God the crazy thing. See, when you're obedient to God, you can ask God about the crazy thing. I didn't think I'd ever be driving. I was looking at a Maybach. Went to my guy because I wanted to get some different wheels on it. And my guy came out and told me on yesterday, he said, you know, there are only two of these, you and somebody else at the whole city of Baltimore. He said, nobody else got this car. I said, God, you're a miracle worker. And every time somebody asked me about it, I said, it was the goodness of God. See, all God wants from you in response is a testimony to what he's done for you in your life. So that somebody else may want to serve the same God that you serve. Obedience, fear and doubt, blockades to your obedience is what the enemy uses. And here's why I want to come home tonight. And then I want to get ready to pray for you. You have no idea what's on the other side of your doubt. (laughs) God help me, Holy Ghost. God's got something waiting for you on the other. Yep. Yep. Oshay. Maybe God's got something waiting for you on the other side of your doubt. There is a miracle waiting to manifest itself on the other side of your doubt. It's why the enemy tries to keep you in doubt. You can literally walk on water if you can get past doubt. You can do the supernatural if you can get past out. Obedience, all right, well, that's it. Obedience will make you look a little crazy. That's right. Uh, uh, all right, first thing you get, I got that. Put that up on the screen there, LaShawn, what Avery just said. That's what it will do. That's what it will do. You've got to get to the other side of doubt. You've got to get past it. Obedience will make you look a little crazy first. Then you get blessed like crazy. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Amen. When you're all obedient to God, even in the little things, in the crazy things, God's been having me just bless people. 
I've been sending money to people, blessing ministries. They were doing just different stuff. God said, just take it. He said, this money that you're raising on, on, on Wednesday night, I want you to bless people with it. And that's what I've been doing. That's what I've been doing. It, it's the small things, my God. Naaman almost lost out because of his doubt on the small things. When he came out and he did the little thing, he came out better. The Bible says his skin was like a baby skin, better than he could ever imagine. Do y'all understand how powerful this is? I'm thinking about staying on this lesson because it's, 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 just, ble it's just being obedient. Stop trying to figure everything out. And let God work it out. Be obedient to God. Be obedient to the man of God. See, that's the problem. We got so many people that want to be bastards in the kingdom. They don't want anybody to tell them what to do. All right. Just because you're anointed doesn't mean you're authorized. Jesus had to be authorized to do what he did by John the Baptist. And nobody was any more anointed than Jesus. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. But he had to be authorized by John the Baptist. Somebody had to teach him how to live and how to die. Jesus, John the Baptist, for all intents and purposes, was Jesus's pastor, even though he was only six months older than him. He showed them how to live and he showed them how to die. Showed them the path that he had to go. Showed them how he had to do it. Jesus had to be obedient to everything he did. And if you are obedient, your life will turn around right now. I'm saying no delay. I feel the Holy Ghost in this room tonight. I am saying to you, no delay. There will be no delay. There will be no delay. There will be no delay. Some of you are sowing already. There will be no delay. There will be no delay if you are willing and obedient tonight, right now. I mean, right now, no matter what your situation, if you are willing and obedient, God will do it for you. God will do it for you right now. The same way he's done it for me. The same way he's doing it for me. You will get it. Amen. Anointed, not authorized. Anointed, not authorized. O'Shea Lali, God has directed you as to who needs to be your covering and how you need to do this and how you need to move forward. God's directing you. You need to follow those directions. Amen. Pastor Howard, is another move that God has coming for you. It's going to seem small, but the Lord says, take it. Walk through that door and see what else I do for you. Because I've anointed you for this moment. I've called you for this moment. And what here's for you, Pastor Howard, the Lord says that your mistakes and the situation did not that you're going through does not eliminate you. It qualifies you. It qualifies you because now you have a humble spirit to be able to go to God and say, God, I need your help. O'Shea, I know I'm telling the truth to you. I know I'm telling the truth. I know I'm speaking the truth to you, right? It's not what you thought it was going to be, not how you thought it was going to be, but I know what God is saying in my spirit right now. I want you all to sow. I want you all to sow. I want you all to sow. I want you to sow. I want you to sow a $41 offering. $41. I don't know where that number comes from, but I feel a $41 offering for everybody on the call. There are, are, are two or three of you that need to do a $410 offering. God's speaking to you to do that for those that cannot do it. There are those of you that cannot do it, but there are two or three of you that need to sow a $410 offering. Amen. God's going to complete some things in your life. Amen. It's the number four plus one is the number of grace. And that's what God is going to give you is the grace to be able to walk through this, this thing and do it the way God has given you to do it. I'm not, I'm not for a whole lot tonight. I want it for something that I believe you can do, that every one of you can do it right now. Just be obedient. Find it from somewhere. Just be obedient. You cannot imagine. Marcus is on here uh, uh, and his kids have, 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 have cupcake kids. I can't tell you the amount of miracles that have been happening in our church since I've been preaching this message. I'm almost ready to go another month and keep preaching this message that you got to just be obedient. Just be obedient and watch what God does for you. If you fully obey my commandments that I'm giving you today, my God, you will see God do things that you never dreamed he could do. I don't know about you, but I want to move into the land of the inconceivable. Amen. I conceive. I can. I believe God is healing my body in a way that I never dreamed possible. 
living in a house that I didn't think was possible, right? Driving a car that I couldn't even imagine or even thought about it six months ago. God's doing it. God's doing it. I'm going to keep going, Marcus, because this thing's got to get down in you. The power of obedience. The power of obedience. The power of obedience. The power. There is power in my obedience. Things change. Things unlock. My God. And you can't, you can't even imagine the magnitude of what you will receive in return just for being obedient. You know what you do? You activate the God of all creation mm, to act on your behalf. You call on the God that made the heavens and the earth. You call on that God, Jehovah, Yahweh, Jehovah, the, the God of all creation, the, the Alpha and the Omega. You call upon him to work on your behalf and to do things on your behalf when you are obedient to him. He said, I gave you pastors after your own heart, after my own heart. Obey those that have rule over you, right? Do it. And when you do it, I assure you, I want you to inbox me with your testimonies. Inbox me with your testimonies. Inbox you. In the small way, obey. In the little thing, the Lord tells you to get up four o'clock in the morning and pray, pray. God tells you to pray for somebody, pray for them. God tells you to lay $20 in somebody's hand, do it. Right. God tells you to go a different way, because when he, the spirit of truth, shall come, he will guide you, doesn't lead you. God bless you, Lamont. He doesn't lead you. He guides you in the all truth. Tell me what I know. God tells you to change your diet. Change it. God tells you to fast. Fast. So I already told you about your tithe and your offering. That's all. All that requires is obedience to God. You do that. I promise you, my God, I can't get it all out tonight. You will eat the fat of the land. The Lord has shown me that the simple thing is Satan has tried to do. Real Satanism, real Satanism is disobedient. God created Satan or Lucifer to do a certain job. And he became disobedient. He said, I will ascend into the heavens and be as God. He got out of his place. You can never get blessed when you're out of place. If Elijah was not by that juniper tree, he would not have been blessed. If he didn't go to Zarephath, he would not have been blessed. You got to be willing to release that and release it and be obedient. Even Jesus coming into Jerusalem said, go get that jackass tied up over there. Tell the man that owns it, the, ma the master has need of them. He had to release it and he was blessed. All right. Are you hearing me? I want to lend it right here. I want to pray for you. Took him more time, taking more time than I have. Phyllis got a new car. Amen. Thank God for every one of you, for all of you that are sowing tonight and for what you are doing tonight. I want this word to deeply penetrate you. That's the word I'm trying to find. I want it to penetrate your soul, penetrate your spirit. Be obedient in little things like getting to church on time. Like when I'm asking you to get to church on time, get there on time. Don't worry about what's happening. Little things. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It's in the little things that the enemy tries to trip you up. It's in those little things that you need to do. It's the little foxes that eat the vine. Do the little things that God's given you to do. And when you do that, I promise you, things will happen. Send me your testimonies. Inbox me. Email me. Whatever you got to do. Send it to me. I'm ready to pray right now. I'm ready to pray. Thank all of you that are being obedient. Those of you that don't have $41, I want you to give the best offering that you possibly can. Give the best. Give your very, very best offering right now. Give your best offering. And I promise you, you're going to see results before this week is out. Amen. Back in July, I told you to sow. And in 31 days, you will see results. I can't tell you the amount of people that have been giving testimonies because they've been obedient. All God, all God is looking for is obedience. It's the key that opens everything else up. So much power, so much power. Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you for those for giving me the strength to be able to share this word. And thank you for your people that have come to hear what thus saith the Lord. We ask, oh God, that you bless us tonight, that you just take this word and let it become alive within our spirits. I rebuke every spirit of backlash and retaliation. I rebuke every demon that will try to snatch it out of the lives of your people. 
Let this word get buried. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. It's the power of obedience. We thank you for it tonight in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you, everybody. I love you. I really do. I wouldn't be here sitting here doing this if I didn't love you. I appreciate God for every one of you. Pray for me. Oh, tomorrow at six o'clock, um, go to the World Assemblies of Restoration. They're having their convocation right now. And I want you to go see that. I will be doing a master class at six o'clock tomorrow for the World Assemblies of Restoration. I want you to be on that. Uh, if I can put it on my on my on my page, I will. Um, but I'll be doing that tomorrow for the World Assemblies of Restorations at six p.m. So God bless you. Love you. Amen. God bless you. Thank God for all of you. All of you that are on here for the first time, I thank you. I want you to share. Be here every week. Amen. I will be here every week as long as the Lord says so. That's my role of obedience. That's my role. So I thank God for all of you in Jesus' name. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Remember, you're created for so much more.